city of Xi'an dates back over 3,100 years, and during that time it has served as the capital city of 13 different dynasties. It's also the starting point of the Silk Road connecting Asia to the Middle East. This morning, we visited the royal tombs at Xianling. The site of Qianling is located in Qian County, which is some 53 miles northwest of Xi'an. Qianling was built in the 7th century, about 684 CE. This area was used by numerous Tong emperors and high officials as a burial grounds. We specifically went to the mausoleum of Emperor Gao Zong and Emperor Suwu. The site was originally commissioned by the third Tong emperor, Gao Zong, who chose the site for its beauty as a tribute to his wife, Wu Zetian, who later became China's first and only female emperor. She's a very prominent figure in Chinese history, and she rose to this power pretty much self-made. In 638 CE, Empress Wu entered the palace as a concubine at only 13 years of age. She originally was the junior concubine of another emperor in China. And after he passed away, she was banished to a Buddhist nunnery. After that, she married his son, Emperor Gao Zong. After Gao Zong's death, Wu Zetian dethroned two of her sons, and her official reign began in 690 CE. She ruled until 701 CE, at which point she was dethroned. Empress Wu finally died at the age of 81 in 705. Under her reign, the Tang Dynasty flourished, and a lot of the greatness that we see and all of the artifacts that we've been looking at come from the time that she ruled. We began our day on the Spirit Way, a long path leading from the base of the complex up to the royal tombs. Lining the Spirit Way on either side are massive sculptures, including winged horses that look like Pegasus, famous generals, and two enormous stone lions. Also along the path are two massive stone tablets. The stone tablet dedicated to Empress Wu was left blank for over 500 years. This was because there were no words at the time that she felt were sufficient to capture what she had done in her lifetime. Later on in time, there were actual inscriptions that were put onto the tablet, some of these depicting dragons. Empress Wu is also known in Chinese history as the Dragon Empress, which is a great honor because dragons depict power and strength. Outside the tomb of the emperor was also a stone pillar tablet. This one was erected by Empress Wu for her husband and it was in seven pieces meant to represent the seven elements in Chinese culture. Those being the sun, the moon, earth, fire, water, air, and metal. One of the most interesting things along the side of the Spirit Way is a collection of 61 life-size human figures. These figures represent diplomats from different nations and ethnic minorities. On their backs, the 61 stone statues have inscribed the names of the individuals and nations and ethnicities who were brought together by Wu Zetian to live at her court. She was known for her keen diplomacy and being able to bring together numerous people. These really give a sense of the unification that was brought about under Empress Wu's reign. The tombs of Emperor Gao Zong and Empress Wu remain unexcavated today. As an archaeologist, the preservation of these tombs and keeping them unexcavated at this time really shows me the forethought of archaeologists here in China. They know that there's a lot to be learned, but they also recognize that they still have much more to learn and that they should wait until they understand things better.